I've done the unboxing, now it's time to show you how I installed it. I'd first like to bring your attention to this little bit of text right here. I think there's about three different kinds of thermostat they sell. My one is a combination boiler. Another one will say heating and water tank. This is your traditional boiler with a immersion heater. And then the other one says multi-zone. I think this is when you want to put them all around the house and heat certain rooms to certain temperatures. The multi-zone one will be cheaper, but you don't get the hub and you probably don't get the receiver with it either because it's just an add-on. Oh yeah, and there's the one that comes with installation. So when you buy it, that's the most expensive one and a gas engineer will come and install it for you. Make sure you've got the correct one for you and then we can start the install. This is what you get in the box. You get the thermostat, you get the receiver, you get the hub, some batteries, some fixings, a power supply, an ethernet cable and a USB power cable. Okay, so what you need to get this running, a heating system that works, a gas heating system, the one with no tank because it's a combination, with a combination boiler on it, uh, an existing broadband connection with a spare ethernet connector in it, and uh, a smartphone, okay, or an up-to-date browser. I'm going to fit my high system to my Valiant boiler, my high thermostat controller. First thing I'm going to do is take the old thermostat out. It's two screws at the bottom there. I didn't actually do them up because it was so low, it was hard to do. So I just have to pull it up from the bottom. And there we go, that's the old thermostat out. Now I think these screws will be in the same place, but it is live, so I ain't gonna touch it until I turn off the electricity, which is right up here. There should always be fused the uh, electricity on your boiler should have a fuse like that so let me just move that out of the way all right undo this here all right that should be it make sure I test it down here again so once that fuses out go back to here let's run some tests nope nothing's live now it was showing live before no nothing's live okay so we got uh, an input voltage there and we've got on and off and a comp we're only using the on and com and we're using the voltage so we're going to get our power in from here and this is our on and off right here for our heating okay so this is the uh, hive one uh, let's have a look it looks pretty much the same as that one at the back here it's two screws underneath just like my one was which you undo alright once you've undone the two screws it comes off just like my one you just take the whole thing off it looks so similar to the one that I've already got you could almost just plug it on there and it will be done I'm gonna have to use the manual let me go get the manual. Okay, I've got the thermostat installation guide. Cool. Oh, that's nice. You get these little stickers to mark the uh, wires with. That's pretty cool. Okay, so a full guide. Let me just find the relevant bit and I'll show it to you. Okay, I found this. Uh, I think I'm doing the single channel uh, receiver wiring because I've only got four wires in mine uh, so the dual channel looks like fine I'm sure my boiler can do it but I'm not I just want it to turn on and off with uh, with echo so I think I'll get away with single channel
So, on my old one, all I had was, uh, compared to this one, is the uh, permanent, permanent live, the permanent neutral, <clears throat> I'm using the common and the on. I'm not using the off and there's an unused one there. So I'm only four wires. I don't think there's any need to turn it off as such. All I want to do is make the heating come on when the temperature gets to the right thing. I, I think it turns itself off when it things anyway. Anyway, I'm going to wire it with the four wires I've got. I'm going to leave out the, uh, the off one. I'm just going to put the common and the on one. Okay, so back over here. This is my old back plate. I'm going to take that one off. There's no electric in here right now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll use those stickers. I'll use the stickers from the book and I'll mark these wires as I take them off. Okay, so this one is the common one. I'll take one of those stickers off here. Where are you? Common. Um, okay, it doesn't have common as such, but it has the number. Uh, and according to the instructions, the number for that one should be, for the common, should be number one. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, it does. Right, so I'll make the common number one. So I'll get the number one sticker. If I can get it off. There we go. Take the sticker off. Number one sticker. Oh, okay. You take the sticker off like that and wrap it around the wire. Now I know that I want to put that, that wire in the number one. And I'm on the other one. That's pretty cool. Alright, now the next one is going to be the on. The on. So, about here, on is number three. So, oh, that's no, not on. Oh, yeah, on. Number three. Okay, so I'm going to put a number three. On the uh, on the sticker off. Undo this one here. Okay. All right. Oh, pull it. No. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the plate off. one here we know is number three there we go it's number three all right now we know we got a live and thing a live and negative coming straight from that fuse box up there so we're gonna undo those they're quite straightforward to me because One's blue for negative, one's brown for life. So I'll take them out. I would label them up, but, right, that's the old one. I would label them up, but there's absolutely no need for me. I only need to know the other ones. All right, so now, this is the uh, the Hive one, and this is my one. I, I, they look exactly the same. They look like they were made by the same company. Yeah, so I think the, the screws, are gonna be in exactly the same place and they are better off wiring it before you screw it to the wall so what are we talking about we're talking live enough here from the fuse there they go again double double triple triple check all right live enough go to positive oh sorry permanent negative permanent live so N is the first one, 
and there is the second one and that's with it facing up like that so it would be negative and live okay So, there's my screwdriver. Oh, that's a piece of needle. Okay, it makes kind of a gap in between the two washers. And there, I don't know if you can see that. And then, I'm going to make sure the wire is going through that hole. Brown wire is live. And the blue wire is neutral. Or negative, I think it is. Right, whenever you tighten some electric stuff up, make sure it's tight. You don't want any arcing. Okay, so that's that. A little bit of cable showing there, I think it'll be fine. Right, see so that's going to go back on there. And that little channel in the wall is where the wire goes down. Uh, okay, now we want this in number one and that in number three. Okay, so so hard to see it being white. Should have coloured it in. Right, so that's number one. That's number three. Number one. Come on. Right, get it right behind there. Tighten it up nice and tight. Double check. Yeah, that's number one. Right, make sure this wires. Not all frayed out. Put it in behind there. Got to get it in between the two washers. Okay, that would be it wired now. All I've got to do is screw it back to the wall. Okay. and tight. Don't suppose you want to over tighten it or you might break the break the back plate. Okay, it's in. It's in. Alright, screw back in. Now you can just fit the front on it. I'm going to just get a dumpy screwdriver and tighten up those two uh, bits underneath. I've got my little screwdriver. So I'm going to push this up underneath. While this is down and tighten these screws. Is that tight? Okay, now the moment of no return is to actually put the fuse back in okay so I've got the fuse back in I've heard the boiler come on little lights flashing down there 
to be continued. I'm going to move on to the uh, one of the other components now. Probably do the thermostat in the living room. Okay, so my thermostat is in the living room. It's on the wall. It looks like that. I've already undone it, but it was just a screw underneath I undone. Lifted up the front, the thermostat came off, and then I undone the two screws there and there, took the thermostat off. Here I have the new thermostat and the back plate for it, which just goes on by clicking underneath and pushing down. The new back plate, the holes are in exactly the same place as the old one. My old, I got very lucky that my old thermostat was the same as my new thermostat. So I just had to put the two screws back in. Right, here it goes. Two screws in, hold the thermostat on the wall. Install the batteries into the uh, new thermostat. Oh, it's come on. Search one, two, three, four. Okay, he's searching for something. You see that? I'm going to put it on the wall. That's it. That's the uh, thermostat installed. Let's get a bit closer. See if it finds anything. Okay, I'm beginning to think that I should have put the hub on first. I think it's searching for the hub, which is not connected. Okay, let's get the hub connected. Okay, so I'm by my uh, thing system in the box, which I made a box in or video, but I didn't. I didn't actually see these in the bottom of the box, but there they were there, folded away nicely. Is the power socket and the uh, power supply and an Ethernet cable. So I'm gonna. Uh, plug the USB, the USB into the power supply socket, pull that out, the other end will go into the hub, into the hub power, I'm going to plug, I don't, I'm not going to use their ethernet cable because uh, I've got my own ones down here, so I'm going to plug this in somewhere. Ooh. There I've got a socket up, there's one on this side. That's it plugged in. And then I'm going to connect it to my router. Just find an empty slot on the back of the router. Yep, I've got one there. I'm going to use their, their cable. Right, so put that cable into the back of there. And then put this end into the last slot on my router, the spare slot. That's it. It's connected now. Power, Ethernet. Connected. Green light flashing. Let's go back and see what the... Uh... So this is still searching. So that's the install of the hardware to, for the, the Hive Hub. Now I'm going to download the app and get it working on Alexa. So uh, I'll do that as part two video. Okay, see you in part two. Thanks for watching, subscribe, bye.